Today we are going to create this abstract wall decoration using geometry nodes in Blender. So we're going to get started by going immediately into geometry nodes and let's delete the cube because we're going to do shift A and we're going to insert a Bezier curve. For this curve we're going into edit mode, take this joint, press R and Z and hold down control to rotate this perfectly 45 degrees. Go back into object mode and click on new to add in a new geometry nodes. On this curve I want to instance a lot of lines. So let's do that by importing an instance on points nodes. As the instance we want to do a mesh line. So let's do shift A and do mesh line and set this as the instance. I want that the origin point of each mesh line is like in the middle of the mesh line. So let's set this from offset to end points and let's set the start location, the Z start location on minus one like this. Now you see we only have two lines, that's because the curve that we're using only consists of two points. I want to resample this curve so that it consists of multiple points. So let's do a resample curve node before the instances on points and then we're getting this. We can set the count of the resample curve like that. Let's set this on 45 for example. These edges that we've created over here, I want to extrude them. So let's add in a extrude node. And we want to set this from faces to edges because we want to extrude edges. However, then you see we're getting this. This doesn't work yet because these lines are now instances. We have to do a realize instances node so that we can actually extrude them. And then you see we're getting this weird artifact. What is happening over here? It's, it's extruding all the meshes like outwards. But we want to say, okay, it has to go to the front. And we can do that with the offset over here. So let's add in a vector. And with this vector, if we connect that with the offset, and we do the Y axis. Then you see we're extruding it like to the front instead of sideways. Let's actually set this vector value on minus one so that we just say, okay, that's the direction of the extrusion. And then with the offset scaling in the extrude mesh, we can set like the actual, like how far it extrudes. Just for a better visual representation, I'm going to set the count in the resample curve on 10. That's a little bit easier to see what's happening. Now I want to make it that the end edges, like the ones that are extruded out, are going to be displaced according to a noise texture. So let's add in a set position node like this. And as the offset, we want to do a noise texture. Set the color of the noise texture in the offset. And you see we're getting this. And the first thing that you see is that the noise is working on each axis. It's displacing it on the X, Y, and Z axis. But I only want it to be displaced over the Y axis that it's actually going either in front or to the back. So to do this, let's add in a vector math node. Add that over here. Set this from add to multiply. And then everything is zero. Make the Y axis make that one so that it's only doing it on the Y axis. Now I want to filter out the back part of each edge. And we have in the extrude mesh top over here. This is this side of the edge. And we can connect this with the selection and then it will only do it on the extruded parts. Now obviously the resolution of this is way too low. So let's add in more points along the mesh line. And we can do that in the mesh line node, set the count on like 100 or something like that. And then we're getting way more detail. Let's actually make it less detailed but not with the amount of points, but in the noise texture so that we're more having like a smooth abstract look. Set the amount of detail on zero and then we're already getting like a smoother look. And then you can set the scaling on two so that we're getting more like this. If you want the displacement strength to be a little bit less, you can set in the multiply node the Y axis a bit lower. And the lower you set this, the weaker it becomes. I like a value of 0.4. Now let's give some thickness to all these plates and we're going to do that by extruding them again. So let's add in another extrude mesh node. Set this like this and then you see it extrudes a lot. Let's set this a little bit lower. You also see that it's extruding the individual faces. Turn off individual in the extrude mesh and then it will see it as like one face. You also see that it's like shaded smooth now. I don't like this at the moment. For now, I like it to be shaded flat. So let's add in a set shade smooth node and let's uncheck the shade smooth. Then you will immediately see that on the other side of each mesh, it's like open, it's like a hollow thing. To fix this, to make it like a solid thing, I want to combine the output of the set position with the output of the extrude mesh. So let's add in a join geometry node, put that over here connect the set position with the joint geometry, and then we're having solid plates. 
there's actually something that we need to fix, which is the orientation of each face. And we can see that if we go over here into the overlays and turn on face orientation, then we see, okay, this side is all blue, so that's good. That means that the normals are pointing outwards. But this side is pointing all red. That means that the normals are going inwards and we don't want that. We want to flip those faces so that also those normals are pointing outwards. To do this, you can simply import a flip faces node and add that in between the set position and the joint geometry. I'm going to set the thickness of each plane a little bit lower to like 0 0.01 or something like that. Unfortunately, there isn't a bevel node yet, so that's the only thing we're going to have to do with a modifier. So let's add in a modifier and do bevel. And for this beveling, let's set the amount of segments higher and then you see something weird is happening. It's only beveling one side and not this side. That's because over here we're putting the set position and the extrude mesh, we're joining that together, right? But that doesn't mean that they are actually connected with each other. No, we have to merge them together. So we have to merge the vertices of this plane together with this plane in order to make the bevel modifier work. So let's do a merge by distance node, set that after the joint geometry, and then it works, as you see. If you want, you can set the amount of beveling a little bit lower, kind of like this, and then it looks good. And now if we set in the resample curve node, the amount higher to like 45, then you see we're already getting a very cool effect. I'm actually also going to set in the first extrude mesh. I'm going to set the offset scale a little bit lower, more like this. If you like to flatten the noise of the noise texture a little bit over one axis, for example, then you can add in a position node. And then if you also add in a vector math node, you can connect this together and then connect this with the vector of the noise texture. And you set the add node from add to multiply and set all the values on one. Now you will see if you set the X value higher, then the noise will be more like flattened along the X axis. I will set this on 0 0.7, 1.7, something like that. If you like to change the Z scaling of each plane manually, then you can make it that the Z scaling of each plane is dependent on the radius of the curve that we're using. So if you add in a radius node and you set that into the scaling of the instances on points. Now, if you go into edit mode for the curve and you take this point, for example, and you press Alt S, you can change the radius of it. And then you can create something like this. But for this tutorial, I will keep it straight. From here, I'm also going to turn on shade smooth. Let's create a texture for this. So let's split our screen in half over here, change this to the shader editor, and let's also go into material preview mode. Let's create a new material. And a material that I like for this is kind of like a gradient, which kind of start off with a darker color over here. And the more we go to there, it becomes like brighter. So give a pretty satisfying effect. We actually have the gradient information in the curve that we're using because we have in the geometry nodes, a spline, parameter node. And if we preview this by pressing Ctrl Shift click on it, then you see we have a, a gradient that goes from black to white. And we want to transfer this gradient information to our materials so that we can use it on our planes. To do this, let's create some space over here. Let's move this all a bit to there. And we want to store this vector information with a store named attribute so that we can store a new attribute which contains the information of the gradient and use that into our materials. Let's name this attribute like gradient. And the value of this is going to be the vector. Let's go back into the material and the material I'm going to call that gradient. Something like that. And you will see if I change the base color of it, yeah, then nothing is changing. That's because we have to assign the material inside of geometry nodes. So let's do a set material node and set that over here and set this on gradient. Now to get that gradient attribute that we created earlier in the shader editor, we can add in an attribute node. And as the name, we do gradient. And now if you preview this, then we're getting a gradient that goes from black all the way to white. You can connect this with the base color of the principal BSDF and then let's preview the principal BSDF again. Now if you want to change the color of this, let's do a color ramp. And the color ramp, you can just manually set the color. So if you do the black part, if you set that to like darker blue or something like that, and the white part, you set that to lighter blue, then you're getting some cool effect like this. I really like this color. Let's preview this thing in cycles. So let's go into render view mode and turn EV into cycles over here and let's switch to GPU. I will set my light a little bit in front of it so that we can see more of it. I will also set it on the other side. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 
This is going to be wall decoration. So let's press shift A and add in a plane to create a wall. This plane, I want to rotate this 90 degrees and let's place that like this. We're going to make the texture of our wall decoration more realistic with some ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion will create contact shadows between the wall and the wall decoration. So to create this in the materials, let's do an ambient occlusion node. And if we preview this, then we're getting this. You see you're getting like shadows between the planes, but also a little bit between here. I want to make this a little bit stronger. So let's do a color ramp and let's drag the black part a bit more to here. And then you see it becomes a lot stronger. If you want more accurate ambient occlusion, you can set these samples on like 128 or something like that. And now we want to multiply this ambient occlusion mask with the color that we've created over here. So let's make some space. Connect the principal BSDF again with a mix color node. We're going to set this for mix to multiply. And we want to multiply color A with color B by a factor of one. And now that I'm seeing this, yeah, I'm going to set the color ramp of the ambient occlusion a little bit lower. It was a little bit too extreme. You know what? Let's recreate this render that I created for the thumbnail because I think why stick with geometry nodes in a tutorial if we can also do the whole scene. So for that, I'm going back into layout mode. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create like a little room. And to create this little room, I'm going to use this plane. So go into edit mode for the plane. I'm going to take these vertices, move them up, G and Z. I forgot to turn on my screencast add-on. Yes, now it's back. And let's create a little room by taking the whole plane and extrude it forward. Let's then take this face and press X and delete faces. Let's go into render view mode. And then you see we're having uh, this. I'm going to delete this light. I'm going to import this HDRI, link in the description. So go over here into the world properties, change the color from RGB to environment texture. Click on open and we're going to open up that HDRI. Just like uh, that. I don't like that the sun of this HDRI is like pointing inwards of our room. So I'm going to rotate this HDRI. So I'm going to split my screen in half and I'm going into the shader editor, set this from object to world. And then with the node wrangler add on, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to do control T to add in a texture coordinate and a mapping node. And I'm going to rotate the HDRI something like this so that the sun is not going in there, but we're still having some lighting from all the other parts of the HDRI. Let's set up our camera. I like to set up the camera. We're going into camera view mode and let's make it that the camera follows our movement by pressing N and go into view and do view lock lock camera to view. Now let's move yourself to a nice position, kind of like this, maybe from the bottom a little bit. Yeah, like that. I like that. One of the camera settings that I want to change is the focal length of the camera. So let's click on the camera, go into the object data properties for this camera, and let's change the focal length to something like 75. And then you can zoom out a little bit like this. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space with the room by taking this side and moving it all the way to there. And I'm also going to make the roof and the floor a little bit bigger by moving it more to there. I'll go back into the camera and then you will see you're having a little bit more freedom in where you position your camera. I'm going to import one single light because good lighting, we're not going to achieve that by putting 30 lights on our object. No, just one light is enough. So let's press shift A and add in a spotlight. And this spotlight, I'm going to put that a little bit over there, a bit over there. And then I'm going to position it onto our object. Maybe we'll change this later, we'll see. The settings of the spotlight will be if you go into the object data properties, if you set the power of the spotlight on like 3500 and let's set the radius a bit higher and let's set the max bounces on like 24 and the spot size, I want that to be 25. And you see it will be something like this. Let's move the spotlight a little bit more like that. And then let's also move it a bit like this. Let's see what we have now. Oh, okay, that looks good. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, let's tweak it a little bit. Yeah, I like it like this. I like it like this. Obviously, everything will look way better if the walls are not perfectly white, right? So for the walls, what I used was this texture for the walls and this texture for the floor. But let's first do the walls. So let's change world to object over here again. And let's create a new material and let's name this walls. And what I simply did was if you have the node wrangler add on, you can click on the principal BSDF and do control shift T and then you can open up your wall texture, select them, principal texture setup, and then you're getting a wall texture. 
Let's actually create a new UV map for this thing. And we're going to do that by going into edit mode, go into edge select mode, select these edges, make them scenes by doing right click mark seam, press A, U, unwrap, and then we're getting a perfect UV map. In material preview mode, we can see it a little bit better. Okay, let's scale this thing a little bit down. So in the mapping mode, let's change the scaling to be a little bit higher. Yeah, like this. And then also for this material, I want to add in some ambient occlusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our wall decoration. And in this texture, I'm going to take the ambient occlusion, the color ramp and the multiply node. I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy this and Ctrl V this in the wall texture. Now the only thing you have to do is put the albedo texture into color A and connect this with the base color. Move this maybe a little bit up so that you're having more. I do like to have a little bit more sunlight in this scene. So I'm going to change it back to world and I'm going to make the ACRI rotate a bit more like that. Yeah, more like this. So the sunlight is kind of coming in there so that it's a bit brighter. I also don't really like this wall over here. So I'm going to round this ball up by going into edit mode. I take these edges, control B to bevel them. Scroll on your mouse wheel to make it a little bit more smooth like this. Let's quickly do the texture of the floor. So let's go into the material properties for the studio and let's do plus to add in a new material slot. If you do new, then you can make this floor. Let's go back into object over here. Let's do the same thing as before. Click on the principal BSDF, Control Shift T, choose your textures, and then you don't see anything yet. That's because in edit mode, we have to say, okay, this face should have the floor material. So click on assign. Let's scale this image up a little bit with the mapping node. So let's put that over here and let's do something that looks like this. Yeah, cool. And then this is the result that we're having now. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Obviously, it's going to be hard to perfectly recreate the scene. But the purpose of this is to just show you like the techniques that I've used in this. Yeah, it still looks a little bit empty right and that's because this thing is now in like a huge void or something like that there is no volume in this so let's create some like volume metrics by pressing shift a and insert a cube and scale this cube up so that it covers almost everything and for this cube we're going to create a new material and this new material we're going to delete the principal bsdf add in a principal volume and connect this with the volume of the material output then it's pitch black. That's because the density is way too high. Let's set the density on like 0.01 or something like that. And then you see, ooh, this starts to look pretty cool. Also other camera settings, I did it a little bit different. Uh, I didn't have this aspect ratio. In the output properties, I divided the X resolution by two so that it would fit like two times a thumbnail on YouTube. So I did it like this and then you're getting something like that. Let's adjust the camera a little bit. Yeah, something like this. So there we have our wall decoration completely generated in geometry nodes. I know this tutorial went a little bit further than just geometry nodes. Let me know in the comments if you like this format. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also comment down below if you have any questions. And if you want to help out the channel and you don't want to miss out on any future videos, please subscribe. And also if you want to get access to this project file that I've used, you can go to my website mtranimation.com where you can find all the project files of my previous videos. And with that being said, I see you in the next one.